is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Hey, there he is. Ah, uh, yes. Sad, sad, sad state where they're at right now, my friend. I mean, when you watch Jay Crowder go for five second rounders, you know you got no chips to play poker. Okay. Um, I think they had chips that might not have been sexy enough at the moment, but other things they could put into play next season. I, I, I think the one thing, Big O, we can sit here and discuss is this. Where did you want their desperation to be? They could have put first in the owner in the me. owner in the owner from the get go. I want an owner that is maniacal about winning every year. If you're a billionaire, uh, then show me that you're a billionaire. I don't want a cheap owner that says, cheap? Well, yeah, cheap. Cheap. he spent he has spent as much as anyone in the top half of the league into the luxury tax over the last 10 years. That, no, that's, that's, no, no, that's now, just now not true. Now we're going back to the big three again? Okay. He has spent he has spent over the salary cap every single year. He has gone above where other teams don't. He has gone into the tax where some teams like the Bulls and the Pacers never oh, Why didn't go. you go into the tax? Really how, how do you how, how do you how do you tell your coach, yeah, you got to play with you know 12 guys? Because three of your spots are two of them we can't fill, and the other one's Udonis Haslam. Well, first of all, you tell your front office, Udonis Haslam, that's not your coach. That's Pat Riley and Andy Ellisberg agreeing consistently to give Udonis that roster spot. That's not a matter of what the coach is saying. That's the front office doing that. That's well, number one. I get maybe that. the But if the owner doesn't want to commit to the 15th spot, he's not certainly going to push and say, you know, I want to win a championship. Uh, we love UD, but let's put him in the coaching uh, department. I'll pay him there. And uh, that doesn't go against the cap. Let's go get somebody in there. If he's not in a hurry to fill the 15th spot because he's worried about the luxury tax, I don't want to hear this cheapness, dude. I I'm tired of hearing about the cheapness. All of your articles – Yours and 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 uh, what's it called? Chang in the you know. There's always this thing. Well, they they want to stay under the cap and oh, no, we under the, the they're they're under, the over the under the cap, under the tax, right? Well, under the tax, whatever, under the tax. That's what I mean. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I want a maniacal owner that wants to win badly every year and it really wants to do whatever it takes. And I don't believe that Mickey Harrison does that. I believe they do it. When it's so obvious, that, oh, we can get Shaq, okay, let's do it. Oh, we can get LeBron, and okay, yeah, let's go do that. But if we're not doing that, we're not taking any kind of chances. And then you're limiting your front office, so they have to kind of stay in certain parameters where they're trying to unearth nuggets that they're trying to find all over the world. They're like miners, you know, and they're trying to find the the the, the perfect cryptocurrency to put together. And then there's this chef that makes everything so much better and spoils the shit out of you in Eric Spolstra and never complains and says he has enough and all this crap. And, and I think we take this guy for granted more than anything else. I, I think the owner's not making enough of a commitment. I think the front office has made a shit ton of bad decisions. And I think it puts the burden on, on Eric Spolstra, who has been absolutely freaking phenomenal man i just think there's a a disconnect here that it, there is no there there's there there is not this one thing that goes through them that it's like the moss brothers that they'll build the stadium for fun while they wait for the other stadium and they're chasing messy and they'll buy eight dps and break all kinds of rules and they don't care and they'll keep trying to buy and they'll do it and there's steven ross you know improving the stadium and and the and the practice facility and if you want Tyreek let's do it and get as many free agents you want I'll put all that money in escrow things that other owners won't do uh, I look Sifu and 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 uh and and uh what's it called the uh, Viola they haven't gotten the results but god yeah, it's not that's from that, a lot of spending. Thank you. Orlando Alzagari just answered his own question. You talked yeah, about, what Inter, you talked about right. what Inter Miami did. Why did Inter Miami's results been nothing? Yeah, but they Garbage. just started. They, they talked about what started. the Panthers have done. They've they won started. one playoff series in 20 years. Sometimes smart business means having patience because you strike at the right time. Orlando Alzagari, the Miami Heat could have made a major splash yesterday 
by putting first round picks into play. But for what? For who? For what is you have to decide? If the for Miami who? Heat put first round picks into play, they would have been in it in for any of the players who you saw yesterday. For who? It, it just the, the, I mean, they whether it was the Kevin Durant deal, I think they could have come they up had with no the shot at Durant. That if, track if, that they gave up. Miami has nothing to give up like that. Come on. You know what? You know what? If you wait again, the deal happened now. If you'd waited to the offseason, there were other chips to put into play. And the whole 15th roster spot, I understand it's a nice story, but what 15th player was going to dramatically or even enter your rotation at this point? Now, injuries and poor play obviously affect things. You know you're, that. You're, 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 my man, you're looking at it completely the wrong way. It's actually getting a really good player and pushing everybody back where your 14th guy becomes your 15th guy. I'm not thinking about getting a 15th guy that's a 15th guy. I'm talking about buying something that's a lot better where you are paying the damn tax. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking chances. Orlando, and I'm talking about Russell Westbrook. Heat, and by the way, how long has he been chasing Durant? Please, the enough only already. The element to add a 15th player would have been one of two exceptions worth $4 million. So again, you're talking about a $4 million player. That's the means they had under the cap to go over the tax, to use their biannual exception, to use the remainder of their full mid-level exception, having given Caleb Martin a part of that. Now, we could argue mistakes were made. Oh, Did they God. think that Dwayne Dedman would I'm... fall off the face of the earth? No. They thought he would be a tangible trade asset. That happened. Did they think that Kyle Lowry would regress to this point? Of course not. Or else they probably never would have made the Atrua Dragic deal. Oh, maybe, maybe they should have asked me before they actually made the move. And that maybe they would have saved themselves a lot of money and heartache when they would have heard me say, what the hell are you guys thinking? Why would you want to trade for Kyle Lowry? That's a stupid-ass move. Who and maybe the they don't make the move. Who was the number, who was the number one next play time? Who was I, the I would number one playoff seed in the Eastern White Conference? Either. God. The number one playoff seed in the Eastern Conference last season, Big O, is who? <sighs> Does it really matter? It matters because Kyle Lowry, when he was playing well, helped the Heat get to the top of the Eastern Conference. He did. Then his play fell off. Look, you make moves to a degree in the moment also. So what you're saying is you didn't like some of the moves they made in the moment. Okay, that's being proved right. That's that's the beauty of, of, of looking at it as an afterthought. I understand that. On the other hand, you're saying they should jump all in now, just throw everything in there. No, 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 no. It's too late now. But you no, have to no. be I'm, I'm patient. Talking, I, I'm t no, 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 no. Listen, this is not coming from hindsight. None of this is coming from hindsight. I've been talking about this all for a while now, that these are all a bunch of mistakes, and you just added a new one with the Deadman one. It, it was such a bad move that now you had to give away draft capital just to get rid of his ass. You gave Duncan a contract, and now you, instead of thinking you might be able to get a first-rounder for Duncan at the beginning of that deal, now you've got to give away a first-rounder in order just to unload his ass. And then you look at all the other deals, the Kyle Lowry deal. I didn't want the, this Jimmy Butler extension. This, is, this was a terrible extension that they just gave him, and now they're going to have to put up with $160 million against the cap against the guy that is breaking down on you. You put together a team loaded with two-point shooters in a three-point shooting league. You know what I mean? It's like like a lot of you. Oh, Bam's franchise. Bam's fran I told all of you last year, he ain't no franchise. Until you can force your offensive will on people, you're not a franchise player. Guess what he did this year? Finally enforced his will. Now he's a legitimate franchise player. This is the guy you got to build around, not Jimmy Butler. You got to know when to get off the gravy train. And, and Pat has had this thing of hanging on too long to older players. My God, he's still holding on to Udonis Haslam at this point. It's you got to stop doing this. You you put yourself in a position when you hang on to these older players just too long, and that's the problem. When you've got an owner that is only willing to pay the tax in specific situations, and then puts your front office in another situation, and they've got to work it where they don't have loose purse strings, like some other teams may have looser purse strings, and then you've got a coach who is just absolutely freaking awesome and he makes a souffle out of any crap you give him 
I just think it's all discombobulated. I don't think everybody's on the same page. I don't think everybody has the same desire. It, it's and you know, here's the other thing. I think we get a little blinded by the bubble run because it was a surprise run, right? And then last year, you were one shot away from the finals. Right. And it's so deceiving because you're really not the kind of team that fits in today's NBA. And, and then this year, the same team a year later is now falling even more behind in today's NBA. Well, because if you're going to minimize the all the good, then it's going to look bad. So if you're going to say, oh, it's just the bubble. Oh, they got lucky and got to the conference finals. Yeah, I but think it's did. kind of deceiving. Yeah, and I find do. find me I another do. team that has made the conference finals two of the last three years. I, it's like I, Find it's me like, another team that has Eric Spolstra, my brother. Okay. okay. Find me yeah, another yeah, yeah. team that has Eric Spolstra. However but, it's played listen out. Listen to my However argument. played out. Listen to my argument. The, the only person that excels in that group is not the Arison family. It's not the front office. The only person excelling on this franchise is Eric freaking Spolstra every day of the year and twice on Sundays. That guy is the gold standard. Team made the conference finals, no matter how, two of the last three years. Big O, let me ask you this. If the Miami Heat were to finish with the number four playoff seed, how would you quantify this regular season if? If the Miami Heat, if, it was, if it's Boston one, Milwaukee two, Philly three, and the Heat four, those teams are really – good championship level contending teams. Yeah. If the Miami Heat were to finish with the number four seed, how would Orlando Alzagari of the Big O Show on the Acura Pembroke Pines Report quantify this season? Another solid season for the Miami Heat. They get okay. to climb in the standings. Luckily, because the East got weak, as some teams had to dump their oh, stars. No, no, so that no, will no, allow no, them no, to no. climb. The East, the East might have the three of the top four championship right. contention teams right now. Right. So yeah, the East exactly. is strong. Boston is strong. Milwaukee is strong. Philadelphia is strong. And then I put Phoenix in now because obviously what they got. Obviously, Brooklyn comes down a little. What I'm saying is in this whole instant reaction society, we're saying right now the Heat are having a terrible season when they could still wind up at home court. I don't know if it's going to happen. I have no guarantees. I do know this. The Heat are on a seven-game seven home winning streak, have been trending in the right direction. Number two, we can call trades disasters all you want. I remember when Goran signed his contract for two years. People said that's ridiculous. He's older. They were able to use that in a trade. Just a trade that didn't work out. Let's see what happens to the final year of the Lowry deal, if it can be put into play. Let's see if any time over these next three years, however it happens, the Duncan Robinson contract can be put into play. Uh, when Myers Leonard resigned, I think it was on with, uh, oh yeah, Orlando Alzagari on one of his many stations, maybe at a soccer stadium somewhere. And we said that was a terrible signing. They wound up getting Trevor Ariza out of that at the trade deadline. Didn't work out great, but he was a positive addition at the time. I think you have to let things... No, play, another old fart. You have to let things play out closer to the end. The Jimmy Butler thing, and again, I feel like, I, I feel like I'm almost like Sarah Huckabee on the Republican response here to the State of the Union. That, so when you, when you look at, the, at some of these other deals, like the Jimmy Butler deal, were you willing to let Jimmy Butler walk at 30 years old and not give him the extension? Yes. Because, okay, and if you were, that's fine. If you were and you're willing to change the whole culture back then, I don't recall you putting it that way. I recall you putting it as no, I, I wouldn't have signed. The, I wouldn't have signed this extension that starts next year. I wouldn't have got. I would have written out this year and, well, and actually, done. It, start, it and, started last year, so it was from two years ago. But my point being, we all know that Jimmy Butler is a persnickety sob, and when well, he's playing and not happy, he is the ultimate pain in the ass. So the Heat had to decide at that time, do you want to put up with Jimmy Butler on the last year of a deal? I saw how that played out in Chicago. I saw how that played out in Minnesota. I saw how that played out in Philadelphia. They were in a spot. They had to make a decision. They wound up getting to another conference finals with Jimmy Butler, who honestly, Big O, even at his age, and I understand what you're saying, during the regular season, he's going to miss 15 to 20 games. He's already missed 15. I get that. Which, by the way, hurts your standings. Which I understand that. But in the playoffs, you know what? I don't think this yeah, is overstating. Awesome. He he's is awesome. one of the league's top 10 playoff players. And awesome. that's where you make your name as a team, which is why they had to give him that deal also. So far, again, Big O is like, big, I, it's like I feel like I'm on the Acura Pembroke Pines Nostradamus report here. I don't know how Big O, Jimmy Butler's contract is going to play out. 
But I do know this right now. Well, what don't Lady, you see it right now how it's playing out? It's too yes, many games he's missed. Having a career year with every one of his metrics across the board and is among the NBA leaders in win shares. He has missed 15 games over the first half of the season. As a matter of fact, let's bring it back to the moment, Big O. The Miami Heat are playing a back-to-back -to -back tonight against the Houston Rockets. Terrible at, at, at Miami Dade Arena. And then go to Orlando to play a very feisty Orlando Magic team. I'm curious if Jimmy plays both games. If he doesn't, and instead load management is cited, then I will come back on the Acura Pembroke Pines report on Monday and issue a mea culpa. But if Jimmy Butler plays the majority or all of the games over the second half of the season, then I think it's a different story. Because then at winning time, he shows he's all in. So, Big O, I know he can oh, no, say yeah. I'm, not, I'm not worried about Jimmy, the player. He's phenomenal. I just worry long term. You've already missed 15 games. I'm watching your body break down right before my eyes. The thing is, you're you you got such big cojones that you'll fight through a lot of shit because you're a tough dude. Right. You're a super tough dude. But your body can only give so much. And he has given everything. And that's the thing that you can tell that there when it falls for Jimmy, it's gonna be like this. It'll be a cliff. Because he, the 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 power and the force and the emotion and the energy that he has to use to play his kind of game just does not fit as you get older and Two older. Things. Unless, think, unless you're Moses Malone, that okay. you weigh 300 pounds and you only jump two inches, but because you're an immovable object, you can get away in your final years and still, you know, be serviceable and all that kind of stuff. I think. Jimmy, I think. Man, that's one, assumptive of his, of his future, but maybe correctly assumptive. But two, there's also a trade possibility. Like you said, you've been championing the Heat's younger players. Build around Hero and Adebayo. Give them the young team. Once he gets that. too old and too broken down, let's see. They will not move him until he, it's see. an expiring deal. Come let's on, man. Let's see if that's the case. What I'm saying is there are other pathways there. The Heat have used pathways similarly for greater good with some trades like that. And yes. You are correct. At a certain point, you just have to sell off and admit it. But we don't know for sure how that's going to play out. And you want the Arisons and people spending money to live in the moment. So we started our accurate Pembroke Pines report with you saying it's all about the moment. Well, in this moment, Jimmy Butler is really freaking good. And if you watched him go to work in the third quarter of their home game the other night, he was as good as anyone on that court. And he willed them to a victory that Bam Adebayo carried them home. He still can do it at this moment. That's why these next two games. To yeah, me he, really he also brought he also brought us Kyle Lowry. Oh, you know what? I think Jimmy Butler is as bad a GM as LeBron James. I, I, I'll agree with that. LeBron okay. brought him well, in. Jimmy Butler is as bad as Michael Jordan. Okay, let's go with that. Yeah, I'm just saying LeBron brought in Russell Westbrook at the cost of Kuzma, Montrell Harrell, uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope, players they could all use. That was bad. Yeah, the yeah Heat that was bad. Sold, the Heat sold us on Kyle Lowry, and it's interesting. Because it's almost as if Jimmy is distancing himself a little from Kyle now. Because he realizes, one, Jimmy's a very good friend to his friends. But Jimmy also wants to win. And it's that M effort part of it that all of a sudden, you know, when he told us about Kyle, well, whatever happens, he'll still be my guy. Not as there's no way I'm going to let Pat Riley. Yeah, train but him. He, he ended it with he's not going anywhere because he knew because that he knew. And it might be because it's what, because what I told you. Well, right. once you're too old and too broken down. You're not worth trading for until you're expiring. And so, so we'll next see. year is when we'll Lowry see. will be whether acceptable it's because it's expiring. Or whether it's next season's trading deadline. His story remains to be told. Duncan Robinson's salary contract story remains to be told. I agree with you that he took an L on Dwayne Dedman. Absolutely. I'm still unsure on the Oladipo contract. He's really cratered with his play. If he's not a player and they're on the hook for $9 million next season, that's going to be a problem also when they yeah. have to bring in someone like maybe even now like a Will Barton on the buyout market oh to replace God. him. Some stories remain to be told, so we'll see. All right. So, yeah. So this is all we got to look forward to. Danny Green, Serge Ibaka, John Wall, Kevin Love, Ricky Jackson, Reggie Jackson, I'm sorry, Patrick Beverly, Will Barton, Terrence Ross, Kelly Olenek, and, and uh, Westbrook. And how does the Westbrook thing make You know what? I'm Let's add another that. guy that can't shoot threes. Yeah, that I'm makes sense. I'm bypassing that. If the Miami Heat, in my view, if you're asking me, Ira, you have two spots open, how would you approach it? 
if the Miami Heat can add Will Barton and Dario Saric, if both are waived, Saric went from the Suns to the Thunder, who have no need for a 29, 30-year-old player, I think the Heat will be a better team than they were before the trading deadline. Again, exhale, folks. Patience. Will Barton can score. The Heat can't score. That would help. Dario Saric Will is a score. Will Barton's shooting like 39% from the field. Will Barton's been phased out that he's playing just junk minutes. A year ago, he was a contributor to a solid Denver Nuggets team. I'm saying we're talking buyout market. We're talking about Heat revival plan. Uh, Dario Saric is a seven-foot stretch big man, which they could use if Yurtsevin doesn't come all the way back. If he can land Saric and land Barton, I think they will take a step forward from the what team. What about Kevin Love? What about Kevin Love? I, I think Kevin Love stays in Cleveland for this reason. Okay. I think Kevin Love realizes he's in enough of a winning situation. He can mentor young players. His time might come back again. He might actually play ahead of Dean Wade. So, again, he's a guy mentioned. But, again, Big O, until these players are waived, they're not available. We have to wait to see. Those are the speculative names. We know that, that Utah is not keeping Russell Westbrook. We've already been told that the Magic are not keeping Patrick Beverly. It seems the same for Reggie Jackson and Charlotte. These next few days will show us who's actually available for the buyout market and why you don't rush to market until you get the full market. Remember, folks, the most important part of the equation is this. As long as any player who played in the league this year is waived by March 1st, he is eligible for another playoff roster. So really, the operative date is March 1. If you're waived by then, you can then join the Heat for their playoff run. The Heat have done this before. They got Joe Johnson, which really helped them in a playoff run within one win against the Raptors of going to the conference finals. They have done moves like this before that have paid off. Some that haven't paid off as much. There's still another part to this. The season did not end last night, even though Orlando Alzagari told you that it did. No, I'm I'm not saying the season ended. I just know that they're not a championship caliber team, and I know I what they're and trying they to do. The deadline. And I think I think they keep putting roadblocks in their way to become that, just like they did with Kyle Lowry's deal two years ago, which they should have been able. They shouldn't listen to another player. They should try to go get who they think really fair, can compliment fair, Jimmy. Fair point, and, but I yeah. think. They also realized the Bucks and the Celtics were just better. And there was not a move they could have made last summer oh, yeah, or no. a move they could have made Thursday to be better than those two teams. It's just like it's like when Pat Riley was banging his head against the wall during the Michael Jordan years or when the entire Eastern Conference is banging their head against the wall during the LeBron years. Sometimes you have to realize your place also while still remaining competitive. Never yeah. once for all the Victor Wembanyama talk have the Heat in any way said, Okay, washing our hands, we're going to go in that direction. That's who they are also. I just, uh, I just remember a Heat team that was so freaking loaded and then said, yeah, we'll go add Brian Grant and Eddie Jones for fun. You know? <laughs> you know that? I just, you know, these are things that I just remember that when, you know, you're like, holy crap, these people are adding Eddie Jones and Brian Grant and they're this loaded and all that. And I know they had uh, some issues with the... Uh, exactly. With the and and, and issues, no offense, but no, what did that team win? Again, you have well, to keep They were in the Michael Jordan era. Okay, so there was an excuse why they couldn't win at all, just like the Knicks and the Pacers and the Cavs, who had pretty damn good teams in the, in the conference and during that stretch. Well, too, and they had I'm going to sort it. of end it here on this today. Of the Miami Dolphins, the Florida Panthers, the Miami Marlins, Inter-Miami our pro mm-hmm. teams in town, and the Miami Heat. Which team is most likely to go deeper in the playoffs in their Always next the round of the postseason? Always the Heat. Always the Heat. But that doesn't take away from you've lost your fastball lately. Let's just talk about it. See, that's the problem that we have in this town. There aren't enough people that are willing to be honest and say, we know the Heat organization is by far better than everybody else. But guys, as of late, you've lost your fastball. You've made a shit ton of bad decisions here, and you've kind of been your own worst enemy at times, and you've got a great, great coach. You're not taking advantage of it. You're not giving him exactly what he needs to make a great meal, and you keep talking championship, but you're not handing him championship recipe. And so then you're not getting that end result and you're tying yourself down to this contract and to this bad move and that bad move and you're counting on a on a often injured player in Oladipo to keep you alive there and then you're on you're on an older player in Lowry who's done already at this point and while Jimmy Butler's fantastic 
you can only take that drug for so long because after that it does permanent damage, but you want to keep taking the drug. So now you extend it for several years and, and you see what's happening. He cannot play all the games anymore because of his style of play. So how do you expect him to live up to that contract on the back end? And I, and you know, and, and then you're trying to appease him. So you bring Kyle Lowry. Why? Cause you don't want to piss him off. That's not this organization, dude. That's not the organization wasn't so sensitive about worrying about pissing somebody else off. You never wanted to piss off Pat Riley. That's the way it should be. All I'm saying is the heat is phenomenal. We know their track record. I just have to say you've lost your fastball lately. That's all. You've lost your fastball. You're not as sharp as you've been in the past, and yet you're still getting results because you got one of the best three coaches in the NBA and one of the best coaches of all time in Eric Spolstra who can make anything out of something, and that guy's phenomenal. You know what, so Pat he's Riley? The only, and Andy he's Ellisburg. the only one that hasn't lost his fastball. And Pat Riley and Andy Ellisberg are still in the bullpen. I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to see how the season plays out. I'm going right. to see how free agency plays out. And I do know this, like I said, you can complain all you want, but this is a team that always prioritizes playoffs, prioritizes trying to go as deep into a season as possible. Solid with, team. Yeah. With what they think is the best way to do it. And I think that should not be lost in the sauce. All right. What do you got going on in the Sunset No? this I week? went into depth on the buyout market. And again, I gave you my two choices just now on Will Barton and Dario Saric, but I think there could be help on the way. Again, the Heat have not been good in transactions. The Heat have not been good in contracts, but they've always been pretty good in recruiting. So now we'll see. When this is sort of like a midseason free agency, all these buyout guys are out there. Who can the Heat lure? I think that'll be interesting. So I think that's something we need to look at also. By the way, the people writing or talking on television, radio, whatever, that the Heat should get like a Russell Westbrook, I don't think they're going to get a point guard because all you're going to do is create even more problems with the whole Lowry situation. Do you agree with me? No, I need to see where his knee stands. If if his knee is at a point now, oh okay, well, okay. But I'm saying if his knee, if he's playing, yeah. is what I'm saying. If he's if playing, he's, that's fine. But if he's at Tim Hardaway State, where all of a sudden Anthony Carter was playing in the playoff series, you know, for the Heat because they had to go in a different direction, then you have to recognize where you are. Gabe Vincent alone isn't enough. I don't want to force Tyler Hero on the ball when he's been so good as a scorer. So yeah, you got to the, the medical reports on Kyle Lowry going to go a long way to determine how the Heat might play out the rest of their roster this season. Ah, uh, yes. Riley couldn't take uh, Timmy to the prom. I remember that. All right. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Heat Beat. And, of course, subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Ira, thank you as always, my friend. Appreciate it. I'll be you. back to yell at you on Monday in another accurate Pembroke Pines report. Thanks, Big O. I'll be here to take the scolding. All right. You be good. Have a great weekend. All righty, and we are here at Acura Pembroke Pines where they've got a fleet of certified pre-owned vehicles that I'm looking at. They've got all the new cars on the lot there, a great selection. So come on out here to 15601 Pines Boulevard just off of I-75 in Pines. Finest dealership in the business. Come see Larry Schlossberg and Pat Nasto, Tony Stampone, all the great people out here always getting it done at Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. There we go. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.